big plays. Let's see what happens. Jump in, get some damage, cast our ultimate, use our three, get some damage onto the Kabrakan. We miss our stun because we are trembled. We're able to get the pick onto one, we're able to get the pick onto two. We have Nox inside of us, we get the damage, we're gonna go ahead and jump, we get the pick onto three with the help of Nox, and we're gonna rotate right, see if we can clean up this Scotty. What a do, Scooby Boo! It's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Odin as solo. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played, with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If this is something that interests you, please check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, Odin used to have the simplest of simple kits jump, have a shield, spin around, have an ult. Now, they uh, reworked him at the beginning of the season. He's a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and review his abilities. Odin's first ability is his jump. Odin is gonna jump up in the air, land, and deal damage to all enemies. This ability is going to deal 120 damage at level one. Odin's second ability, Odin is going to give himself a shield. If the shield still exists after 4 seconds, it's going to explode and deal damage based on how much health is left on the shield. If the shield explodes with full health, the shield is going to deal an additional 15% bonus damage. Odin's 3, Gungir's Might. Odin is going to empower his Gungir with runic magic, becoming immune to knockbacks. Every 0.7 seconds, Gungir charges a rune, and Odin poses out damage around him, slowing enemies for 2 seconds. When Odin releases the Gungir, it's going to travel forward and deal damage to enemies, stopping at the first enemy god hit. So, there are three pulses of damage. Each pulse means that you're entering the next state of the Gungir Spear. So right here, on blue buff, we are going to miss a minion, which means we're only going to be level 1 after this wave and after the blue buff. If you can get your jungler to start on the blue buff with you, and you can make it to wave, while there's still two melee minions and three archers, you'll hit level two. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and make a play for the totem of Ku. Arthur probably is gonna have high pressure on us, so this might be the only totem we can secure. Now we're gonna switch back to lane, kind of concede the lane and run back under tower. But with his third ability, it's going to deal three pulses of damage. After the first pulse, you can throw your gun gear. After the second pulse, you can throw your gun gear and it's gonna have a different effect. Then after the third, it's going to have a different effect. So the stage one is it's going to increase Odin's attack speed for three seconds and all of the allies around Odin. The second stage, it is going to lock onto a target and become like unmissable. It's going to hone in on them. And then the third stage, which is the stage I recommend you use, is going to stun the enemy. So you can cast this ability. I generally wait for all three pulses, but if you wanted to use an earlier one, you would just use the ability again to cancel it, and then RT to throw it. Playing on Xbox, sorry, that's the throw command for me. Getting some pulse, we got the stun onto the Arthur, right as he's dashing. We're gonna go ahead and use our shield to absorb a little bit of damage, make sure that he stands within the distance so he takes the explosion damage. We're gonna just kinda stick to him. Jump on him, he's pretty weak, we can hit this, that would be amazing. Unfortunately it was not enough damage and we took two tower shots so that trade probably was not worth it. Odin's ultimate, Odin is going to summon a circle. While Odin is inside the circle, he's immune to slows and roots. Enemies inside the circle cannot heal, it has 100% anti-heal for inside of Odin's circle. If the enemies try to leave the ring or jump over the ring, they're going to be chased by the gun gear and take some additional damage, being slowed for 2.5 seconds. There are 6 walls. Each wall can take 5 basic attacks and be destroyed. Most of the time, your ultimate is going to expire before the enemies are able to break one of the walls. And whenever Odin gets a kill inside of his ultimate, he's going to gain a permanent stack of physical power. It's going to be 5 power per stack, and he can stack up to 10 times. So he can gain an additional 50 power from getting kills within his ultimate. 
which is pretty much a free item. So you definitely want to try to capitalize on getting picks while enemies are within your ultimate. Odin's passive. Odin is empowered whenever an enemy dies on the battlefield, an enemy or an ally. So anytime anyone dies on the battlefield, Odin gains bonus movement speed and bonus power. It is going to be a movement speed stack of 4%. Oh, we're going to go ahead and ult this King Arthur. Very close to our tower. He takes a shot. We're going to go ahead and stick to him. We're going to use our 2 and our 3. And we trade with each other. Probably could have played that in a way where we didn't go down, but I felt like King Arthur had the advantage. We kind of trapped him near our tower. He dove into the tower for us, so then we tried to just follow up with some damage. Our allies are in trouble. Anytime the god on the battlefield dies, ally or enemy, Odin is going to gain movement speed and power. He's going to gain 8% power and 4% movement speed, and this can stack, stack up to 5 times. The duration is going to last 8 seconds. So in terms of the leveling order, at level 1, your jump does the quickest burst damage. So if you want to get 120 damage off on the minion wave, the jump is the way to do it. The raven, or his shield, it's at best going to deal 115 damage if the shield does not take any damage at level 1. But then the 3, it does 3 ticks of 20 damage, and then the final tick of 60 damage. So that's 120 damage, but the scaling is a little bit better on Odin's 3. So I'm going to be maxing out his 3. Or I like to use his 3 at level 1. Then I like to put a point into my 1, put a point into my 2. Max out my 3 because it scales a little bit better at level 5. In terms of the build, we went with Warrior's Blessing, and then we went with Soul Eater. Soul Eater is going to give us some crowd control reduction. It's going to give us a little bit of power, and it's going to give us some ability lifesteal. We really want it for the lifesteal. It's going to allow us An to stay in lane a lot longer than we should be able to. And it's pretty easy to stack. We need to help our friends. Help. Let's see, same level with King Arthur. He's got wave advantage right here. Looks like he's going to make a play for the Totem of Kill. We're going to group up the minions, jump on them, use our 3 to get the pulse damage. King Arthur's going to jump on us, so we're going to use our shield. Since he destroyed our shield, there was no damage from our part to return to King Arthur. Right here, we are very weak, but we have Soul Eater and we have Blue Buff. So as long as we exist, we should be able to recover some health and some mana. And if he comes into our tower, we have our ultimate. So we're actually in kind of a holding position, but we're in a good position. Your middle tower is under attack. An enemy has been slain. Nice so right here, I'm not sure which I'm going to level up next. I'm going to start leveling up my shield. I think being able to have a fatter shield is going to be pretty helpful. Plus, it just kind of does a lot of damage if you jump with the shield. Probably didn't need to let the minions come all the way into the tower. Probably could have held them in front of the tower, absorbed a little bit of the damage, and then cleared the minions. So that way I get the full amount of gold. If a minion gets hit by your tower shot, the amount of gold you get for that minion going down is reduced. Oh, that is a King Arthur ultimate. We're going to go ahead and use our shield. Use our ultimate just to make sure that we can get out of here. He has us very weak. Not sure if we want to back quite yet. We do have our teleport, but we're about 300 gold short of being able to buy the boots that we desire. Which are going to be Warrior Tabai. Our blue is Our up. We don't really have the health to go for we it right now. Uh, we're just running. I don't think we would have been able to do a whole lot right there, so we're going to pick up the tier 2 version of our boots. They were warned. 
We are thinking Arthur's on our blue, so we're just gonna jump over the wall. Luckily, he was not, so we're just gonna clear the camp. We did miss some XP under tower from jumping over the wall. But if Arthur was on our blue, I feel like it would have been worth it, or still is worth it. We're able to secure blue, not entirely sure, while our jungler didn't make the rotation on this time. We use our shield, jump down on the minions to get the bonus damage from the shield. Nice job. Your right tower has been destroyed. You've got some strong magics. Well done. No problem, thanks. So I feel like King Arthur and I, it's been pretty neutral trades. We're gonna use our three. We do a lot of damage. We're gonna use our two. Stick to him. He uses his ultimate. We're like, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> and then we just kind of fall back and start clearing minions. We have him very weak. If he were to engage us again, I think we would win this trade. We're gonna go ahead and hit the totem of two. Looks like King Arthur was back in. Still no sight of King Arthur, so I think we're gonna go for the totem. And then we really need to back to get our boots online. The power spike right, we get from Warrior Tabai is pretty significant, so it looks Your like we're gonna go ahead and back, and make sure that we get that. Friends don't leave friends behind. The additional so 40 power is really gonna help out, and the amount of damage and the amount of pressure we can apply to this King Arthur. Right tower is under Somebody on our team throws up a surrender. Looks like the right lane is really getting stomped. They lost their tier one tower, and Scotty's kind of already pushed up onto the tier two tower. Your left tower is under attack. King Arthur is on my tower. I think he might even get it here. We cast our ultimate. We miss our stun from the three. We're gonna stick to the King Arthur with our shield. Try to get some basics onto him. We jump. He's able to dodge it. We use our shield. We're gonna use our three to get the pulses, the stun. And we're able to clean up the King Arthur with some basic attacks. So Odin does have an attack chain. It is a normal hit, normal hit, stronger hit. You might even have more than that. Let's see here. Basic, 105. Oh, now we're going to use an ability. 105, 93, 158. <laughs> so... Odin definitely has an attack chain. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I saw some consistent numbers. I saw a lower and then a higher number. You've only just begun, haven't you? While King Arthur is missing in left, we're gonna go ahead and rotate right. It seems like this is a good time because of their positioning on the map. We're gonna use our shield. Completely whiff onto that Kabrakan. Completely whiff our other ability onto that Kabrakan, but we're gonna use our ultimate to trap him. He uses his ultimate, we use our shield, and we're able to get the pick onto the Kabrakan. So that is going to give us 5 power for the rest of the game. Because we got a kill on the enemy while he was in our ultimate. We get the stun onto the Bakasaur. We are able to get the shield to explode on him. Nox is able to land a basic and clean him up. King Arthur is nearby. We can go ahead and stick to him. I don't think our team's rotating over, so we're really just tussling with him in jungle by ourselves. Not something we're looking to do, so we're gonna rotate back to left, clean up the lane. King Arthur is back over here, so he did not rotate mid. It's done, basic. Now we have our shield on us in case he wants to try to deal some damage. It explodes on him. Ultimate is down! We're going to jump over the wall, get some additional damage, use our 2, use our 3, 3 gets the stun, our 2 explodes, we're going to have to fall back just a little bit, so Beck dashes in, uses an ability and is able to clean up the King Arthur. So we're going to go ahead and start working on the tower, Akasaur is nearby so we're going to pull back, we do have our ultimate if we need to help out. We, we casted our ultimate, but we got gobbled. Maybe it would have been a better idea to not jump in an ult, but to just walk up ult and then jump out of it right away. 
use my ult to create some spacing between the enemy, myself, and our Sobek. The fact that I jumped in means that I would have to walk out instead of being able to jump out. So right there, when trying to use your ultimate for defensive purposes, maybe don't jump in to use it. Maybe use it and then save your jump to get out since you're using it for defense. We're going to go ahead and teleport to our tier 2 tower in the left. Warrior Tab Eye is going to give us some additional power, the 40 power. And then after that, we're going to be going into Void Shield. Void Shield is going to give us some power, some physical protections. It is a hybrid item. And the passive on the item is going to reduce the enemy's physical protections by 15%. And this applies for everyone on my team. So if Bakasaur and King Arthur are standing near me, I'm reducing both of their protections by 15%. Their physical protections, that is. And then Apollo can come by and deal damage to them while they have 15% less protection. Sometimes penetration is specific just to your character. With Void Shield, it is not. It helps out just the enemy, just the Apollo on our team since we have three magical. It helps all the physical people out on your team deal more damage. We're gonna go ahead and use our three. We got two of the three pulses. We got the stun. We're gonna use our shield. He comes back in, takes damage from the shield explosion. We have our ult. We're gonna go ahead and start trying to bop with him. We jump on him. We use our two. We use our three. Three is gonna stun him, and then the shield is going to explode. I think we got a stack on our ultimate for that. We have two. Nope, that was our passive, not our ultimate stacks. Is there even a way to read how many times I've killed somebody in my ultimate? I feel like it's gotta be tied to that passive icon, but it was, it's not as passive, it's just ultimate. Either way, we have a pretty penny in the pocket. We've definitely gotten one person on inside way. of our ultimate. I think that King Arthur kill, I think my ult collapsed ultimate before I actually got the pick onto him. So I don't know if that second one registered. Bunch of people in mid. We're gonna pop our shield. Hello. Jump on the Kraken. Use our three. Nox is able to ult them. We're gonna fall back. Beautiful freeze by the Emir. Just shuts down that Akisora ultimate. We're kind of weak. We have our shield, so we actually have a little bit more health than we're beating on. We get the stun onto the King Arthur. He goes down inside of our ultimate, so we definitely got a stack there. And if we look over our passive meter, there is now a blue H. So I guess that is how you mark how many times people have been killed in your ultimate. But then that leads me to ask the question, what happened to that Kraken earlier? We're able to get the pick onto the Baron. Ymir used his ultimate, we had some crowd control reduction, so we weren't getting pulled as hard as some of the other characters, or some of the other times we got pulled. After going into the void shield, we're going into the sledge, we're going to max out our crowd control reduction. If we get stunned, we want to be stunned for less. If we get slowed, we want to be slowed for less. So the way crowd control reduction works is if you get stunned for a second, and you have 20% crowd control reduction, that stun is going to be reduced to 0.8 seconds. Way. The maximum amount of crowd control reduction that you can have is 40%. So that's what we're shooting for. Between Soul Eater and the Sludge, we should be able to reach our 40% crowd control reduction. We're going to go peek their blue buff real quick. King Arthur is pushing up our wave. So I think taking his blue from him is kind of a polite jab at him. We're going to go ahead and pick this bad boy up and then teleport to our tower. An enemy has been slain. So we can fight him at our tower right after taking his blue. The bridge now, Mama. An ally has been slain. We got distracted by the fat wave of minions, and then we tried ult him while he was in our tower. Unfortunately, he had already dashed by. We really need to go clean up that minion wave. Oh, that's such a fat wave that we're missing. Why did we play that so poorly? We're able to get the pick onto the King Arthur. 
Rackens here. We're landing some basics on him. We're gonna use R2, jump back in, get the damage onto the Scotty, get the pick onto the Scotty. So right here, if I would have used these, I think I would have gotten out of there and maybe even been able to turn back in. I had it, didn't use it. Don't know why I didn't use my beads. The Kabraken stun set me up for the Bakasaur basics. Bakasaur does have hasten, so he's gonna stick to me. The second I got hit by Baka, I was kind of in trouble. If I would have beads, I think I would have been able to use any of my abilities to get out of there. A little bit of a misplay by me. But on all, I feel like we're having a good Odin game. 735, level 17. I guess our jungler and the enemy jungler are the only people that are higher level. Nox goes down to the Bakasaur. Bakasaur was silenced and rooted, but he had his ranged auto attacks. And he can still auto attack while silenced and rooted. A little unfortunate for that Nox. She did good stuff hitting her combo. But Bakasaur was able to clean her up. We're going to go ahead and make our way to the blue buff. Right now, we might be spending a little bit too much time cleaning up in our solo lane. It might be more impactful for us to be in team fights. Yeah, so we pick up the blue. We're going to go ahead and rotate mid. We see that we have our support and our jungler there. Big plays. Let's see what happens. Jump in, get some damage, cast our ultimate, use our three, get some damage onto the Kabraken. We miss our stun because we are trembled. We're able to get the pick onto one, we're able to get the pick onto two. We have Nox inside of us, we get the damage, we're gonna go ahead and jump, we get the pick onto three with the help of Nox, and we're gonna rotate right, see if we can clean up this Scotty. We're gonna go ahead and clean up the red buff. Make sure that we pick that up. Right, is Scotty is not on our Phoenix line, so I think she is backing elsewhere. There we go. We got her. We're gonna go ahead and jump on her. Don't think there's a whole lot. Yeah, she's done though. So we are. We just got picked on four people. Bakasaur is the only person left, and he's all the way in the left lane, solo lane. So we have plenty of time to get this Gold Fury. In between Nox and Odin, it is going to take plenty of time. The Gold Fury goes down. I really like that play leading up to that. Got the pick on two. Duped out the Baron. Had Nox explode. I think Nox's three is one of the most slept on abilities in the game. Being able to dash inside somebody, explode, and have your cooldowns like being reset while you're inside them. It's ridiculous. I think that's such a strong ability. Kimura's gonna show face with King Arthur. There's two people attacking Sobek, so we're gonna kind of hang out in the mid still. We cast our ultimate just to spice things up. We get the stun onto the Baron. Bracken ults. We're able to get out. Apollo ults in. I think he just got CC'd. Apollo goes down. He was able to get the pick onto one. We're falling back. Ymir is coming. We're kind of low on mana, so we don't have the most for this fight. We're going to try to save our Nox from the Bakasaur. We're trying to get slow on him. We're going to have to jump away. We are probably not going to be able to defend this tier 1 power, so we're just going to go ahead and back. We didn't have the health or mana. We're going to pick up Genji's Guard as our magical defense item. Anytime we take magical damage, we're going to reduce our cooldowns by a little bit. There is a cooldown on this effect, but in general, as we take magical damage, our cooldowns are going to go down. We're going to cast our shield, reduce some of the damage. Shield gets exploded. We're going to jump onto the minion wave, try to clear that. We have our ultimate in four seconds. We use our two, we're going to use our three. We're going to go ahead and cast our ultimate. No healing for the enemy team. Now we're immune to slows and brutes. We're going to go ahead and cast our shield. An our ultimate is expired. Our shield goes off onto this Kabraken. He's a little tanky. Apollo is able to clean him up. 
So we're gonna clean up the minion waves and we have a stack of four pushing up mid. Attack fire giant! Fire giant call, eh? Okay. The enemy team gets the pyromancer. We're gonna push them out of the fire giant space and I believe we're gonna go for the fire giant. Oh, Scotty, you can't just come back and eat my three for me. I'll stun you for that. Nox is able to clean her up. Now it is just the Baron and the Bakasaur. We're gonna go ahead and start the fire giant. We use our shield that eats a little bit of the damage for us. Basically, we are just going to want to keep using R2 to take some of this damage. We are able to secure the fire giant. So now we have about 4 or 5 minutes of increased HP 5 and increased MP 5. So if you look at our health and mana bar, they'll both be full relatively soon. Like, we don't need to back for health or mana because we just need to wait around. Attack our team is stacked heavy on the left side of the map, so we're going to start making our way, cleaning up the left lane, maybe push this left tower. Looks like our team is going to push the tier 1 tower and mid, that is surprisingly still up 24 minutes into the game. An enemy has been slain. Our Apollo is down, he is our best character for taking out structures, and he has an ultimate that allows him to split push really well. Our allies are in trouble. We're gonna go ahead and clean up this tower, it looks like we're losing people in mid, so we're gonna rotate towards middle lane. We do have our ultimate. We jump onto the Gabrakan, slow him with our pulses, stun him with our three. Wait for Scotty to close in. Oh, nope, just go ahead and ult the Kabraken, just himself. I think we're gonna be able to get this. Yep, we're able to get the Kabraken. Scotty is melting us, we're gonna use our shield to avoid some of her damage. We're gonna jump over the wall. She was pretty smart in predicting that and stepping back just a second. We're gonna cast our shield. We're using our slows, we get the stun. Unfortunately, the dog popped our shield. If the dog did not pop our shield and our shield could have gone off right there, we would have done some additional damage. So right here, I think she's gonna win the trade. I'm gonna start falling back. It's I had to land a lot of abilities really well and dodge her autos. All she had to do is hit me with a few autos. So we play it safe and we kind of just fall back, wait for our team to push up and push her back. After going into Gendy's Guard, we're gonna be going into Heartseeker. Odin has three damaging abilities, so he is great for applying Heartseeker procs. Heartseeker is going to give us a decent amount of power. It's going to give us 10% physical percent penetration, 10% physical penetration, there we go. And it is also going to make it to where whenever we deal damage to an enemy with an ability, we're going to be dealing a percentage of their maximum health. Sobek gets melted. We are going to have to run right here. We're going to have to cast our ultimate, the Bakasaur ultimate. Or the Bakasaur with Hasten Katana is pretty deadly. We're gonna go ahead and just fall back all the way. On my way. Ymir is getting chased down middle lane. He gets ulted by Kabraken. We're gonna come and see if there's anything we can do to save him. Kabraken's able to get the pick. We have to avoid Bakasaur. Like we will die the second he connects with us. Oh no. Accidentally hit my teleport relic right there. We're gonna jump into the fountain and we're able to get out. Your middle phoenix has been destroyed. So let's see what they do. Looks like they're gonna fall back. We're gonna go ahead and clean up the wave. Your left tower is under attack. They're making a play for the left lane. Let's see if they're gonna push the phoenix. Under the bridge now, mama. Looks like they're gonna fall back. Oh, Kabraken's hanging around. But it looks like everyone else on the enemy team went into the jungle. Defend the middle lane. Kill my double-edged blade. On my way. So we do not have a middle phoenix. Somebody is going to need to kind of continuously clean up a wave or two in middle lane. 
pretty sure that the gold fury is down. I think they recently hit it. We need oh, one wait. good team fight, and we should be able to just toss this game slain. open. Apollo's able to get a pick onto the Scotty. We're gonna go straight for the Baron. So this is a great example of frontlining. Baron does a lot of damage on the enemy team. We make sure that Baron can't get near our teammates. And once he runs away, then we're gonna go and relink with the fight. Look at how far he away he is from the fight. We're gonna stick to him again. You're not getting out of here, Baron. Oh, we miss our stun, that's a shame. We get the jump, we're gonna go ahead and ult him. He can't heal from his till. His ultimate eats the damage from our shield. We are able to get the pick. We're gonna go ahead and jump out. And our team was able to clean up everyone in the left jungle. So I feel like that was a good example of frontlining and how you want to try to position yourself in team fights as a solo laner. Sometimes being able to get one of their damage dealers out of the fight is not enough. But right there, I feel like it was a good play and our team was able to capitalize on Baron not being there. They were able to clean up everybody else. We upgrade our teleport glyph and we're gonna go ahead and teleport in. We're gonna jump, go for the Skabracken. Paul is able to get the pick. We're gonna work on the tower. We are taking damage, that is a Scotty ultimate. We're gonna jump back. Ymir is able to get the pick onto the Scotty. We're gonna cast our two, use our three, get the stun on the silence knock, and that is a pick onto the King Arthur. We're gonna clean up this middle tower. Two people, I feel pretty healthy. I have my ultimate, let's get it. Oh, that's the Bacchusaur ultimate. We should probably wait for that to end. We use our ultimate, separate the Bacchusaur. Now it is just the Baron left. We're gonna get the stun onto him, and just keep the damage. So back block into the knock setup and a Ymir freeze beautiful CC chain and we were able to start it so they have nobody left to defend I think we just win right now well if you guys enjoyed the video please be sure to give it a thumbs up it really helps the video out on YouTube these stats for this game will be posted in just a moment if you feel like you learned anything at all please check out the channel and subscribe for more content thank you for stopping by I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to join the Discord server. Have a good one. Bye-bye.